for being here with us today. We appreciate it. I know it's a lot of confusion about this. There's a lot of folks who are, are also very frustrated. And that's why I've asked, as I mentioned, you know, the governor to please ratchet down some of the, uh, the rhetoric, some of the, uh, well, the, the uh, encouraging people to confront each other. Um, I think at a time like this, we can come together, we can be kind with one another, and maybe we can, you know, we can have conversations and give each other a little bit more grace and understanding. If I see someone who chooses to wear a mask, I understand that they have reasons for choosing to wear that mask. The same reasons, maybe if I see someone that doesn't wear a mask, uh, maybe there's a reasons why they can't wear that mask. A lot of different things happening. And I just, uh, boy, we've really gotten to a point in time where, um, you know, I, I just never thought I'd see some of these things. But uh, we want to talk legally about what's going on right now. And that's why we appreciate you being here with us today. Um, so w- we just talked about some of the new things that are in this version. This is 153, Executive Order number 153, if you're keeping score at home. Uh, and, and you can actually look these up online. Uh, we've got them up. We'll put them on the website as well in a link here. But uh, Catherine, not only did she tighten some of these restrictions, we talked about some of those changes. What do you need to know if you're a business, uh, if you're an individual, you're out and about, but also uh, she loosened some as well. She made some major changes when it comes to voting. Uh, yeah, the and I would say that's the only thing she did to loosen a restriction. So um, we have um, paragraph I or, or subdivision I uh, of the exemptions that says if you are at a polling place for purposes of vo- voting in an election, you are not required to wear a mask. So um, I think that was a, a very good thing that she did. Um, why, do but, you think, why do you think she chose that? Um, well, I'm not sure other than it goes hand in hand with another uh, part I'll talk about here. In fact, I could just skip over to, I think the same thing is happening in in subdivision um, 2K, where she's talking about uh, you're exempt if you're giving a speech for a broadcast or to an audience. Um, And there's some additional wording she added in there, but I'll pause on that for a second. But it also ties in with paragraph six that talks about um, that no individual would be subject to a penalty under section eight of this order for removing a mask while engaging in religious worship at a house of religious worship. So um, all three of those things, the the voting and the, um, you know, giving a speech and being able to go to church are all part of first amendment protections that we have. So it looks like she's trying to head off any potential lawsuits at the past by including some of those very things. Um, the part that, yeah. And so what it makes it even more interesting is that she still doesn't get it. There's, um, there's still, uh, the first amendment rights cannot be abrogated or diminished in any way, but yet she's doing that. So for example, with the one about speeches, the prior language in 147 just said, if you're giving a speech for broadcast or to an audience, Uh, This time she added to the end of that sentence. So it now reads, uh, you're exempt from wearing a mask if you are giving a speech for a broadcast or to an audience, provided that the audience is at least six feet away from the speaker. So she's putting yet another layer of information out there, which um, another layer of requirement out there, I should say, uh, that's not allowed by the First Amendment anyway. So she's like, she's trying to do these carve outs for First Amendment protected activities, but then still trying to limit them. I, this, um, and- this is an, I, 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 I know you're an attorney, so I'm not, I don't want to, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say anything negative against lawyers and attorneys, but this seems to always happen when we get more and more. I mean, the, you just go, I don't know if you've ever done this, anybody listening, but go and read like the terms of service and agreement that you have to sign when you download an app or when you, Boy, if you read some of these, it really, uh, it's, you know, Catherine, you've got your work cut out for you because, I mean, an average person, we, I mean, I don't have time or energy to read all that. And I don't even know if we'd know exactly what's all in there, but there are armies of folks that are being hired and employed to write these things. And I would assume that uh, very similarly with what the governor has written here, there are people sitting around a table and say, oh, mate, what, what do we put that in? And then, no, take that out. And then, and there are these conversations that are happening. I just don't know 
if we really need, if we really need all this as a somebody, I just kind of believe in the, I don't know, maybe I'm naive, but I just kind of believe in the ability of people to do the right thing. I know not everybody will, but that I, I do think that for the most part, when we let people, um, we you know, empower them, we give them the right information, the best to make the, the decisions. I, I just believe that they will. Well, and, and there's also an important part that this is um, so many of the people that are advocating for wearing these masks or bullying others because they're not wearing masks. They're failing to recognize that the science is not, it's not like there's conclusive science out there that says wearing masks is going to stop coronavirus or it's even going to slow it in any way. So um, I agree with you that this needs to be a personal choice issue for someone who wants to wear a mask because whatever the reason is, right, they, they're immunocompromised or they work with somebody who's immunocompromised or they, whatever, um, that should be their choice and they shouldn't be harassed about that in any way. It, but likewise, if you have someone who is not wearing a mask, either because they are disabled or they're with someone who is disabled and needs to be able to communicate with them by their the lip reading or one of these other um, you know, topics we've talked about, it should be a personal choice issue. That is not a government mandate issue. Mm-hmm. Um, and, because, and part of the reason is because the science isn't there to you know, definitively say anything about, about this. We have uh, scientists and doctors on both sides of this issue with the same level of credentials. So you know, we have to pay attention to the fact that this isn't like a you know, well, the sky is blue, everybody has to take it as a fact kind of scenario. But a few key points since we brought up the First Amendment. Um, So of course, in our United States Constitution, the First Amendment says that um, we cannot have our right to free speech uh, abridged, uh, or to peaceably assemble or to petition the government for redress of grievances. It literally says we cannot change it, we cannot modify it. That's what abridged means. So we cannot modify in any way, shape or form someone's ability to say, uh, circulate petitions that would be petitioning their government for a redress of grievances um, or to speak to others. So we can't even add that in that six foot um, social distancing requirement because it's abridging the right of people to have free speech. Um, and so, but our second uh, thing that we should take note in is our state constitution. We have uh, right in there in the preamble, it says that we are given blessings of liberty, uh, blessings of freedom that should be undiminished. So, you know, again, not changed in any way, not lessened or reduced simply because there's coronavirus or the next big thing that's gonna, you know, be a danger to us. Um, These rights are undiminished. Uh, So we have in there uh, section, article one, section three of our state constitution specifically says the people have the right peaceably to assemble, to consult for the common good and to instruct their representatives and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So, you know, whether it's doing, holding a rally and talking about you know, freedom issues or, and again, that's a two-way street. This isn't, um, it's not a color thing. It's not a race thing. It's not a uh, political party thing, whether you're a member of uh, Black Lives Matter or whether you're a member of, you know, the Donald Trump for president 2024 or whatever the, you know, 2022, whatever the the next, um, you know, thing is that you're looking at. Um, it's, it, it's all, we all have the same rights. We all have the same right to free speech. Um, we all have that right to petition our government for redress of grievances, to peaceably assemble. Um, and so anyway, section three of our state constitutions, article one is something we need to pay attention to. Section four is uh, where we have the right to be at liberty to worship God according to their, the dictates of his own conscience is what that one says. So it doesn't say that you're you know, only going to be exempt from wearing a mask when you are doing this, this, and this in your religious worship, meaning all the rest of it is something that now you're going to be exposed to. Um, And then freedom of speech, section five, every person may freely speak, write, express, and publish his views on all subjects. Uh, And so, and it says right in here that we're not going to restrain or abridge the liberty of speech or of the press. It says right in our state constitution, that very language. So, there's no, um, there's no way that we can ever have something that's going to restrain or abridge or diminish these rights, period. It does not matter uh, whether we're at war, whether we have a pandemic, whether we're dealing with you know, um, a, a famine, it does not matter. Our rights are guaranteed to us in the constitution and no governor, no legislature, no court can do something to abrogate or diminish those rights. So 
uh, it's very important that, that people recognize that. And interestingly enough, in the governor's order, paragraph six, it says right in here, nothing in this order shall be taken to abridge protections guaranteed by the state or federal constitution under these emergency circumstances. Well, the funny thing is it almost insinuates that under these emergency circumstances, our constitutional rights change, but they don't. In fact, our state constitution is pretty clear that even in times of emergency, things are supposed to be, keep, they're supposed to keep going the way that they are meant to go. Um, that's article four, section 39 of our state constitution. So uh, definitely we need to realize that the language of the order is it does have these exemptions, even if you're a business who knows it's unconstitutional and knows quite frankly, it's not a lawful order, um, then it, you still are afraid of just the, the practical, the logistical concerns, the realistic concerns that come out of you know, bulking these requirements. Um, if you're in that position still, I would urge you to make sure you're paying attention to the exemptions. Um, and so something that has um, changed is um, with regard to businesses. Um, paragraph three was the one that talked about that businesses must post signs at their entrances and require people to have masks and refuse service to those who are required to wear them but are not wearing them. Well, paragraph C is what she added with 153. And it says that a business may not assume that someone who enters without a face covering falls into one of the uh, exceptions um, and so including the exception for being medically unable to tolerate the mask. Um, and it further says that a business may, however, accept a verbal a representation from the customer that they're not wearing the face mask because they fall within a, a particular exception. So, um, well, while it's not permissible, it's not constitutional, it's not legal even for her to do this executive order, it is interesting though that she recognizes that people don't have to run around and get written doctor's orders to not wear a mask. Uh, they can give their own verbal representation that they're exempt and the store has to abide by that. The government entity or whatever it is has to abide by that. People don't have the right, businesses don't have the right to grill their customers on their medical conditions. I mean, that's just not um, I don't care who you are, you don't have the right to do that. And it, it doesn't fall under HIPAA. Some of the people are out there saying it's under HIPAA. That just stops our medical providers from disclosing our information to others. Mm. Uh, but we do have those inherent privacy rights. And something, I guess, above all else, we need to remember that the Constitution was put in place to secure our freedoms and to limit the powers of government. And so um, state and federal constitutions. So to the extent that our governor or our legislature or any piece of our government is not given particular authority to do something, they don't have it. They can't just pull something out of thin air. It's, some people treat this as though, well, there's no law that says the government can't do this, so therefore they can. Nope, they only have the right to act uh, insofar as we have given them that particular uh, authority to do so. And then on the other side of that coin, our rights are given to us from God. We don't get our rights from the state, the legislature, the courts, from the governor, anything. So we don't have to prove that we have a certain right. Just because we have a right that's not necessarily enumerated in our constitution does not mean we don't have that right. We are only specifically accounting for certain rights that our forefathers saw coming or saw the need to um, protect. But we as people are not limited to the rights that are spelled out in our state and federal constitution. So those are some big key points that some of these people are tending to forget when they debate this issue. Attorney Catherine Henry's on with us right now. Uh, so I wanna ask you, we, we gotta move through this quickly. I know you've got uh, things you've gotta do today too. If you do have questions, you can ask them quickly in the chat and the comments will uh, let you get through there. I can read them quickly there if you have one. Um, one person was asking, are, are businesses allowed to deny you service or say that you can't come in if you don't, uh, if you're not able to wear a mask or if, if you're not wearing one? Um, so even by the governor's own orders themselves, uh, 153, it's very clear that even if we're going to assume the executive order is enforceable, uh, the requirement to make people wear a mask, uh, it, it does not. It does not allow for a business to just unilaterally say, nope, you have to wear a mask no matter what. In fact, we've seen a lot of signs being posted, some that were shared by the local ABC station um, and whatnot, where they're 
I want to say there's WZZM and some other things that they're putting up those, the, you know, wear the mask, it's the law. It's not the law, first of all, but second of all, the exemptions or the, the language of the order itself does call for exemptions. And the new paragraph added makes it very clear that a business is supposed to be able to accept that customer's verbal representation without any kind of proof or documentation or full discussion. That's not, it's not allowed for in here. What do you and recommend so if, if, if somebody is refused service and, and has an issue? What do you recommend that that person do? I recommend they document it. Um, I recommend that they uh, help me try to find attorneys that are willing to step up and help sort this out because it is happening every single day in every single community so far. Um, and so we need to get back to a point of common sense and we need to get back to a point of recognizing that you know, how about let's just treat everybody the way you want to be treated. Do you want to have somebody, if you or your family member has a disability, do you want them to be harassed or stopped from getting necessities uh, like groceries or food or whatever? Um, I, you know, I don't think the business owners would say, well, yeah, I have no problem with my, me or my family having to disclose all of our medical information or being, you know, totally prohibited from, you know, participating in any of those activities or those services. Um, so we need to we need to dial it back and realize that even if you're going to want to follow the governor's orders, even if you, you know, whether you think they're constitutional or legal or not, but you know, you don't want to put your business license at risk or whatever, even then you still don't have the right to grill people about their medical conditions or any of the other exemptions that are on there. Um, if somebody, you know, falls into a different category, you still don't have the right to grill them about it. You can take their verbal representation that they fall into one of those categories. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, this requires us to be very kind to one another. Uh, if I am stopped and I'm uh, not wearing a mask and somebody stops me and is asking me questions, I got to be kind and say, you know, this person probably has no idea they're, they're getting paid minimum wage to do this job. And, and they're afraid that they're going to lose their job, or maybe they have a small business. They're afraid that they're going to lose their business. They've already been through enough, the shutdown and the economic damage uh, that these folks have endured, they're just trying to survive. So I've got to give them a little grace and say, okay, I'm not going to lose it. And, and, and I'm going to be calm and I'll, and I'll talk with them in a, in a very calm way about these things and, and vice versa. If I own a business or maybe I'm listening out and I'm, uh, I got to stop somebody and ask a man, I'd be a little bit more, uh, you know, calm and, and, and understanding when it comes to people who are you know, whether, whether or not they're protesting this because it's a, it, it's a, an issue with them, or maybe there's something that's going on. It's deeper medical or even uh, an issue psychologically, mentally. We've heard a lot about those issues right now with PTSD and things like that. Uh, I saw a story of a veteran. I mean, this is an incredible story, the other side of the state, but a veteran who is, uh, he's, he's dealing with having to go into these stores right now. He's got this PTSD served his country. And, uh, and, and yet there are people, I, I saw this, uh, article pointed online. It's okay to yell at strangers if they're not wearing a mask. It's never okay to yell at strangers about anything, but this person equates it as if, uh, somebody is uh, running into traffic or maybe, uh, possibly going to hurt a family member, things like that. This type of thing, we've got to dial it back. I think you're right. Uh, Catherine, thank you so much for being here with us on this and just kind of answering some of these questions. I know you're going to have more questions. We'll have uh, Catherine back on another time here. I'm sure we're going to get an, another executive order here, maybe before the week is over. We're at 153 now. So trying to make sense of all this is really what we're trying to do here. I bring you the, the in-depth coverage on some of these things because context matters. Re, uh, re, re, restorefreedommi.com is the website. If you have questions, she's got a great FAQ there and things that you can ask and get your answers to questions. You can reach out to her there. Catherine, thank you so much for being here with us today. We appreciate you. Yes, thank you. Have a great day. Hey, thank you very much again, you too. And then uh, if, if you see this, we're streaming it on Facebook or maybe you want to share the podcast as well, click share because this is stuff that people... Nobody's covering it. Even though you don't watch this in a local news, people aren't going into this much depth and detail. And this is just something that I think it's informative and everybody needs to know. So go ahead and click that share button. We can help get that out there. Justin at justinbarclay.com. You can email me as well. Justin at justinbarclay.com. The podcast is up. Just search West Michigan Live, the iHeart.